can't fix your board here. <laughs> of course I'm not. I'm John Waters, the writer and director of the original Hairspray. Boy, a white fat girl fights for integration. That was a good idea I had. First an independent film, then a Tony Award-winning Broadway musical, followed by a big Hollywood movie remake, plus I'd been paid to write a sequel to the musical that didn't happen, then a weekly Hairspray TV show based on my original movie that also didn't get made, and recently a special event TV movie sequel for cable that also went into turnaround. <laughs> but you can't kill Hairspray. Now, NBC is doing the musical live on network TV this December. Hey, I used to want hairspray on ice, but now, what the hell? I want them to do hairspray in space. <laughs> Today, we're taking hairspray in a whole new direction, the symphony orchestra. If it works, maybe someday I can come out and hum bolero while old people like me make out in the audience. <laughs> A concert version, like what we're doing here, is basically the cast singing and dancing all the songs, dressed in full costume and doing most of the dialogue from the musical version. Here's where I come in. I'm the narrator. Use your imagination. I'm here to speed things up when we can't use celluloid dissolves or fade outs or change the scenery like they do in Broadway. Think of me as your friendly editor. Next number, please. Let's move it along. We only get two hours here tonight. Okay, Baltimore, 1962. Right after Elvis and right before the Beatles. In other words, the real 60s hasn't happened yet. No hippies. Kids got high on cough medicine, not pot. Hair was high, not long. Very, very high. Matter of fact, there's a secret Baltimore word to describe the citizens who went overboard on teased, ratted, bouffant hairdos. Hair hoppers. And that's us tonight. We are hardcore hair hoppers and proud of it. Baltimore is Highland Town. Eastern Avenue row houses made of form stone and a polyester of brick. White marble steps so clean you could eat dinner off of them, mothers used to brag. A bar and beauty parlor on every corner. Working class, blue collar, and bursting with teenage style. Home of the Turnblad family. Meet Tracy an ample white girl who can't get enough of rhythm and blues music. Her best friend, Penny Pingleton, not as brave as Tracy in the hairdo department, but yearning to rise to the same height of social rebellion. Tracy's mother, Edna, turned black. <laughs> Always played by a man, so the audience, never the other characters, is in on the secret. Edna's on doctor-prescribed diet pills, but she's still hungry, taking in the neighbor's ironing to make ends meet. Her husband, Wilbur. <laughs> Proud owner of the Hardy Hard Joke Shop, our good hearted laugh riot if there ever was one. Never tires of the sound of a whoopee cushion, no matter how many he sells. <laughs> and yes, sadly, Penny Pingleton's mother, Trudy, so uptight racially that the mere sight of a black person sends her into spasms of paranoia. <laughs> The Buddy Dean Show, my local inspiration for Hairspray. If you were on the committee, the regular teenage dancers on the show, you were practically as famous as the Mouseketeers. In Baltimore, at least. The only city that broadcasts the show. In 1962, the world was a mess. Segregation, excuse me, separate but equal, was still quite evident. No, life was not fair then. And Hairspray is the story of how I wish things had turned out. But we're talking musicals here, not documentaries. So imagine the best. Sit back and get ready for the nicest kids in town as they were built without irony. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of my dream dance party in the sky, Mr. Corny Collins.